What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender modifier tutorial for you. In today's video we're going to check out the Remesh modifier, which is a modifier that allows you to go through and basically redo the topology of different objects inside of Blender. So this can have a lot of different applications from cleaning up bad geometry to creating kind of a cool blocky effect, lots of different things you can do. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so this modifier is basically used to create new mesh topology. And so what that means is that means that it comes in here and it's going to change the different parts and pieces that make up your different models and it's going to basically redo them. Um, it's going to redo all of the faces and edges in here um, to try to give you kind of a quad topology or quad geometry. And so there's really three options that are contained inside of this modifier. So if we go into the modifier settings, it's actually four. So um, if we go into the modifier settings and we were to add a remesh modifier. So let's start with the first one. So you might notice you get this kind of like weird effect when you first start off. So basically what this is doing is this is going through and it's using math um, from your original geometry right here to try to break this up into different quads. So it's trying to use a mathematical function in order to break this up into quad style geometry. And so there's a few different options in here that you can adjust for the way that it does this. So you can see how there's options for blocks, smooth, sharp, and voxel. So let's start with the blocks. So with the blocks, basically what this is doing, and we're gonna turn the octree depth up a little bit, but basically what this is doing is this is coming through here and it's really trying to, it's really trying to take that geometry and break it up into blocks. So if you look at this, you can see how these are actually made up of blocks now, as opposed to the geometry that we had in there before. And you can adjust the resolution and depth at which this does this by adjusting the octree depth function. Note that as you start dragging this higher, um, so if I go up to 8 or 9, um, it really starts to kind of affect your performance. So just be a little bit careful in there. But see how you can use this in order to take your geometry and remesh it into blocks. And so usually you use the octree depth in order to set the resolution. And then you use the scale in order to kind of fine tune that. So notice how I can drag the scale left or right. And I'm going to bring this down maybe back to 7 or something like that. But notice how you can drag the scale from left to right to adjust the size of those blocks as well. So you can see how the lower values are going to give you bigger blocks, the higher values are going to give you smaller blocks. And you can only drag this up to 0.99, um, it doesn't go any higher than that. So if you tried to enter a value of 1, it's not going to work. So the other thing you might know is my model's currently being cut off right here around the ears. That's because we have the option in here for remove disconnected checked. So when you check the box for remove disconnected, basically what that means is that means it's going to remove things that aren't really connected in your model anymore. So notice how if I check this box, it's going to remove these. And really that's because these are only diagonally touching and they don't actually have faces on faces in here. So you can adjust the threshold at which those things are removed by using this little, little slider down below. But usually that's going to be used to remove isolated parts of the mesh. And then smooth shading, that's just going to come in here and instead of using the harsh shading, it's going to do the smooth shading. Same as right clicking on this and clicking shade smooth. So that's how you can use the blocks. Um, one other cool thing is let's say you wanted to create an animation where this becomes blocky. You could keyframe your scale for an animation. So I could just click in here to keyframe this. And then, let's say I wanted this to be 100 frames in, I want the scale to be full on, so I'm just going to type in a value of 0.99, and I'll keyframe that. Well now, if I was to click play, you get this animation where this is going to animate into a more detailed model over 100 frames. So that's the blocks function. Um, you can create some kind of interesting things with that. Smooth and sharp are going to do a lot more smoothing of your topology. Probably a better way to look at this is to click in here and turn on the wireframe. So if you look at the wireframe, notice what that's doing is that's coming in here, that's smoothing this out to quads. So notice how as I adjust this left and right, instead of these being blocks, it's really kind of smoothing and subdividing all of these out in order to try to make this 
quad geometry. Um, so this is going to work, the, the options in here are going to work pretty much the same way as they did for the blocks. Um, and the smooth and sharp are actually pretty close to each other. So the smooth is going to try to smooth everything out. The sharp is going to try to re reproduce sharp edges and sharp corners. You do need to be a little bit careful with that one because you can get some kind of odd results that will go away if you turn your octree depth up. But again, you're, you're always kind of, uh, you're always trying to kind of walk that line between between getting the detail you need and adding too much geometry that's in here. So then the other option that's in here that's interesting, and let's go ahead and add a monkey head for this one. I'm gonna move this to the right and we'll rotate it. So if we were to remesh this last one, using the voxel function. What the voxel function is going to do is that's going to use a different algorithm and it's gonna to try to generate a new solid mesh that maintains the same volume as the original. So this definitely gives you a different result than what you had in here before, but it's another thing you can try if you're really trying to add or adjust the detail inside of this mesh. So if I tab into edit mode, for example, you can see the difference between the original and what the voxel is going to create. So you can adjust the adaptivity in here um, with this slider right here. Notice how the further to the left we get, the more subdivisions we're getting. The further to the right or the higher the value, um, the less subdivisions we're getting. So these faces are going to be a little bit bigger. And so practically speaking, um, you can use these for a few different things. So obviously the blocks is just cool and fun. So um, there's always the value in that um, because we like cool and fun. But let's say that we have a model like this one one that I brought in from SketchUp. So I downloaded this in the 3D warehouse. You can see that the topology in here is really bad, right? And part of that's just because SketchUp uses tries instead of quads. Um, part of that has to do with the way this is modeled. But let's say you wanted to try to clean this geometry up a little bit. Um, you could apply the remesh modifier, which I'm just going to turn back on in here. So you could apply that remesh modifier in order to remesh this into better looking geometry. So you can see how this is much better geometry than what we had in there before. So that's definitely something you could do um, in order to clean up those really nasty models that you import. So I haven't really tested this out, but I'm pretty sure people use the remesh modifier to adjust your meshes for sculpting as well. So you can use that to um, either create detail that you can go in and sculpt, or you can also use that to clean up detail um, that needs a little bit of cleanup after working with sculpting. So another use you you could have for this modifier. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Have you used this modifier? Do you have some cool ideas for how you could use it? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.